that's Donald Yates, who not only through his own Cherokee ancestry discovered his own Jewish roots, but he's also leading the charge in the DNA discoveries of the ancient roots of the Cherokee and other Native American communities. When researcher Donald Yates began the Cherokee DNA project, he expected to confirm the tribe's ancient roots in America. Instead, the results sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The DNA didn't match the textbook story. He found genetic signatures that had no business being in North America before Columbus. These weren't from Siberia, they were from the Old World. What he uncovered suggests a hidden history of transatlantic voyages and a genetic mystery that rewrites everything we thought we knew about who the first Americans really were, exposing a truth some would prefer stay buried. The DNA bombshell that changed history. They began testing the DNA of people who could trace their ancestry directly back to the Cherokee tribe before the year 1750. What they expected to find were the standard haplogroups A, B, C, or D. But that's not what they found at all. Instead, the results came back with a startling collection of genetic markers that, according to the official history, had no right to be there. They found high frequencies of haplogroups like T, J, U, K, H, and V. These weren't from Siberia. These weren't from Asia at all. These genetic signatures were overwhelmingly found in populations from the Middle East, North Africa, and the Mediterranean. To put it mildly, this was impossible. Haplogroup T, for instance, is common in modern-day Iraq and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. Haplogroup J is often called the Jewish marker because of its high frequency among Cohen and other Levantine populations. And haplogroup U is found in the Berbers of North Africa and ancient Egyptian royalty. What many overlooked was the sheer scale of the findings. This wasn't just one or two anomalous results that could be dismissed as recent intermarriage. These markers were appearing consistently in Cherokee descendants whose family lines were documented as being purely Native American for centuries before significant European contact. It suggested that this old world DNA was an ancient and integral part of the Cherokee gene pool. This discovery transformed a simple question of ancestry into a profound historical mystery. If the Cherokee people carried the genetic legacy of ancient Egyptians, Hebrews, and other Mediterranean peoples, how did it get there? The implications were staggering. It meant that long before Columbus discovered America, other sailors from across the Atlantic may have not only reached the continent, but also integrated with its native populations, leaving behind a genetic footprint that has been hidden for centuries. This genetic bombshell wasn't just an academic curiosity, it pointed to a secret history of America, a past far more interconnected and complex than we were ever taught. The evidence started to mount moving beyond just lab results and into the documented histories of specific families. It revealed how these supposedly separate worlds, the old and the new, may have been intertwined in ways we are only now beginning to understand. The Cherokee DNA project was no longer just about genetics, it was about uncovering a lost narrative, America's darkest secret. And it raised a terrifying question, if this much history could be buried, what else don't we know? But the genetic markers were just the beginning of the puzzle. The discovery of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean DNA within the Cherokee wasn't an isolated event. As Donald Yates and his team dug deeper, they found that these genetic clues were supported by a wealth of historical records, family traditions, and even cultural parallels that had been dismissed or ignored for centuries. It was like pulling on a single thread that began to unravel a much larger tapestry of hidden history. The thing nobody tells you is that stories of white Indians or light-skinned, blue-eyed Native Americans have been part of Appalachian folklore for generations. While often dismissed as myths, the DNA evidence suggested these stories might hold a kernel of truth. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence came from the historical record itself. Traders and explorers in the 17th and 18th centuries often described the Cherokee and other southeastern tribes in ways that didn't fit the stereotypical image of Native Americans. The naturalist William Bartram, traveling through Cherokee country in the 1770s, noted that many Cherokee had light skin, auburn hair, and European-like features. He described them as taller and more robust than the whites and of a brighter and fairer complexion. At the time, these observations were explained away as the result of early undocumented mixing with European settlers. But what if the cause was much older? The presence of haplogroups like H and V, common in Western Europe, suggested that these features could have been present in the population for much longer. The project also uncovered fascinating family histories that seemed to confirm the DNA. 
Many Cherokee families had oral traditions of ancestors who were not from North America but from across the sea. Some spoke of moon-eyed people who were in the mountains before them, a legendary race of white-skinned people who built ancient structures and were eventually driven out. Could these be folk memories of an earlier non-Siberian population? Furthermore, many people who identified as Melungeon, a mysterious mixed ancestry group from Appalachia, were found to have deep Cherokee roots and carried the same Mediterranean and Middle Eastern DNA markers. For generations, the Melungeons had been social outcasts, their origins a puzzle. Now genetics was suggesting they were a key piece of the Cherokee mystery, perhaps a remnant population preserving this ancient blend of ancestries. Even more startling were the cultural and linguistic parallels. Yates and other researchers pointed to similarities between ancient Cherokee traditions and those of the Old World. For example, the seven clans of the Cherokee have a societal structure that some have compared to ancient Hebrew tribal divisions. Certain Cherokee words and place names seem to have Semitic roots. The name of a key ancient Cherokee town, Nikwasi, was argued to have parallels with ancient Hebrew. While mainstream linguists heavily dispute these connections, those who believe in the DNA mystery see them as another layer of proof. They argue that if people from the Middle East arrived in ancient America, they would have brought not only their genes, but also their language and culture, fragments of which could have survived for millennia. The puzzle was becoming more complex. It wasn't just about genetics anymore, it was about history, language, and memory all pointing to the same shocking conclusion. Was all this simply a series of incredible coincidences? Or was it the echo of a forgotten age of transatlantic contact? The academic wall of silence. If the evidence for a different origin story for the Cherokee is so compelling, why isn't it common knowledge? Why is it still treated as a fringe theory? The answer, according to researchers like Donald Yates, is simple a deliberate and systematic suppression of the truth. This isn't just a case of academic disagreement, it's about protecting a narrative that has been carefully constructed for centuries. The idea that Native Americans are solely of Siberian origin is more than just a scientific theory. It's a foundational pillar of American history and law. To challenge it is to risk upending everything. One of the biggest reasons for the resistance is the academic establishment itself. For over a century, careers have been built on the Bering Strait theory. Textbooks have been written, and entire departments have been funded based on this single linear story. To admit that ancient sailors from the Middle East or Europe could have reached America and mingled with native populations would force a complete reevaluation of American prehistory. What many overlooked is that science is not always purely objective, it is also a culture with its own dogma. Any evidence that contradicts the accepted doctrine is often fiercely attacked, or even more effectively, simply ignored. Researchers who present anomalous data are frequently labeled as pseudoscientists and are shut out of mainstream journals and conferences. It's a wall of silence designed to protect the status quo, but the motives go deeper than just academic pride. There are powerful political and legal implications. The concept of aboriginal title and Native American sovereignty is legally tied to the idea that indigenous peoples were the first and sole inhabitants of the continent, descending from an original Siberian population. If it were proven that some tribes like the Cherokee have significant ancestry from the old world, it could theoretically be used to complicate and undermine legal claims to land and sovereignty. Opponents could argue that if they are not purely native, their aboriginal rights are less clear. Although this is a twisted and racist interpretation, the fear of it being used in court is very real. It's a legal minefield that many tribal governments and federal agencies would rather avoid altogether. Furthermore, the very definition of Native American identity is at stake. Many federally recognized tribes use genetic testing and documented lineage to determine tribal membership. The established system is built around the five official Siberian haplogroups. Acknowledging a wider range of native DNA markers from the Middle East and Europe would create a bureaucratic nightmare. It would force a re-examination of who is considered native and could open the floodgates to countless new claims for tribal enrollment. To put it mildly, it's a Pandora's box that institutions are terrified to open. For these reasons, the Cherokee DNA mystery has become America's darkest secret, not because the evidence is weak, but because it is too powerful. It challenges the scientific, political, and cultural order, and so it must be contained. But how does mainstream science explain away these inconvenient genetic findings? 
Faced with the explosive claims of the Cherokee DNA Project, mainstream geneticists and anthropologists offer a much simpler, though far less dramatic, explanation. For them, the mystery of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean DNA among the Cherokee isn't a mystery at all. They argue it's the predictable result of admixture, the mixing of genetically distinct populations, that happened after Christopher Columbus's arrival in 1492. They contend that Donald Yates and others are misinterpreting the data, mistaking recent ancestry for an ancient connection, and building a sensational story on a foundation of flawed assumptions. The official scientific consensus is firm. There is no credible genetic evidence for widespread pre-Columbian contact between the Old World and the Americas. The primary argument is that while Cherokee families may have oral traditions of being full blood, 500 years of contact, trade, and intermarriage with outsiders has made pure genetic lines virtually non-existent. The thing nobody tells you is just how quickly and widely genetic mixing can occur. From the earliest days of colonization, European traders, explorers, and settlers moved into Native American territories. Many of them were not just from England. They were from Spain, Portugal, France, and other parts of Europe. Critically, some of these early settlers were Sephardic Jews and Moors from North Africa fleeing the Spanish Inquisition. These groups settled in the remote Appalachian Mountains, often living alongside and intermarrying with Cherokee and other tribes. This historical reality, mainstream scientists argue, easily explains the presence of haplogroups like J, T, and U. These markers weren't brought by ancient Phoenician sailors. They were introduced by a Jewish trader who married a Cherokee woman in the 1700s or a North African who joined a tribe to escape persecution. Over generations, these genetic signatures would have been passed down, becoming a natural part of the family's lineage. To an ancestor living in 1850, this European or Middle Eastern ancestor would be a distant memory and they would identify fully as Cherokee. Their descendants, taking a DNA test today, would see these anomalous markers and without the full historical context, might assume they were ancient. Furthermore, mainstream critics point out major flaws in the methodology of projects like the one Yates conducted. They argue that relying on self-reported ancestry and amateur genealogical records is not scientifically rigorous. Without strict academic level verification of every single family line, it's impossible to rule out a post-colonial ancestor who brought in the exotic DNA. Scientists also state that the claims of linguistic connections between Cherokee and Hebrew are considered pseudoscience by virtually all historical linguists. They are seen as forced comparisons based on superficial similarities, not on the rigorous principles of language evolution. While the story of ancient mariners is romantic and exciting, the scientific explanation is grounded in Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is usually the correct one. And the simplest explanation here is not a vast historical cover-up, but the well-documented history of intermingling between peoples in the American South over the last five centuries. So are we missing a key detail in our analysis of history? On one hand, we have the official mainstream account, a straightforward story of migration from Siberia, followed by 500 years of well-documented admixture with people from Europe and the Middle East. It's a clean, logical explanation that fits neatly into the established timeline of history. On the other hand, we have the tantalizing and disruptive evidence presented by researchers like Donald Yates, a cascade of impossible DNA markers, supported by old family stories and historical accounts that hint at a much deeper, more complex past. We are left standing at a crossroads between accepted fact and a profound, unsettling mystery. Does all this happen overnight? The questions raised by the Cherokee DNA Project are part of a larger global re-examination of our ancient past. People are beginning to wonder if the neat, linear histories we were taught in school are the full story. Is it possible that the ancient world was far more connected than we ever imagined? Were the oceans barriers or were they highways? The thing is, even if only a fraction of the claims about the Cherokee DNA are true, it fundamentally changes our understanding of America. It means that the story of this continent is not one of isolation, but one of multiple ancient encounters. The story of our past is never truly settled. Was the established history of America built on a lie of omission? Let us know what you believe. For more mysteries that change everything, like this video and subscribe.